I learned early that people are actually just people. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And once you start realizing that, and like people are very tribal, you know, certain things ain't racism. Certain things actually could be tribal. Welcome back to another episode of Nothing But The Truth with Marvin Herbert. This is a channel which tackles young, like-minded people like my former self who are troubling in life with uh, choice-making processes. Um, the main thing I like to do, offer and create is avenues, platforms and exits into meaningful um, careers in society, in civilizations where people can live and contribute and live to a standard which is normal in comparison to getting stabbed, shot, being drug addicted and going to prison. So there's a narrative to what I'm doing <clears throat> because we want to change the mindsets of like-minded people from my environment and I don't think there's any other way to do it with, without people like myself and other like-minded people from like-minded environments. Um, today we've got an exceptional guest and friend on today with the, none other than the Spencer Fearon. Thank you very much for coming on, Spencer. Oh, thanks for inviting me. Come on, man. Yeah, just... I get the phone call from you, I'm coming, man. Come on, do you know what it is, yeah? I didn't think... Who else, yeah, who's full of so much knowledge, wisdom, who's been sort of capsulated within the urban culture of England since the 70s, right? And haven't gone down the road that I went down. Do you know what I'm saying? To like, and to me, I'm actually proud of people like you. Thank because, you, sir. No, 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 but it's just, I fell victim to the, the ego, the, the, the peer pressures and, the grooming aspect of the elders doing bad stuff. And I was captured by that forever. And when I see people that have made it, wearing the, the bling, dressing with the garments. No, the bottom yeah. side is this is the reality. I'm right? my heart, not my garments. No, 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 But the, the reason why most of these kids do what they do, me included, was yeah. so we had all the material acquisitions that you have and all these other people have that we see and we want. And we believe there's only one way to get it. So we get we sat on the journey thinking we're doing like our elders are doing, we've got the bits and pieces. But you're living testament and proof that it's, it's possible being a le legitimate law-abiding member of society that's righteous, honourable, spiritual and caring and selfless more than anything. Do you know what I'm saying? Because I see what you do in the community and I know you're not going to sit here and blow your own trumpet, yeah. but you're selfless, right? And 90... 9% of what you do does not be seen. No one sees what you do. People just see what they see. I mean, a small percentage of what you do within the community and for your people, you know what I'm saying, Chuck? Well, I've got to say, off of the back of that, that's massive big up to MTK Global. I'm going to keep this thing 100. Now, irrespective of uh, um, how certain people want to see things at, you know and I know, like, MTK Global has allowed me, like in the last four years it's been there, for me to properly change lives because they they got in their part, which is a corporate social responsibility of the company. So there's like, Spence, I got a phone call, and it was like back, it was Sandra Vaughan, she said, we see the things that you're doing within the community, how you're trying to tackle certain things, and, blah, and we'd like to help you. So from that, I was like, for real? She said, yeah, we, we, wanna, we wanna help you, Spence. And so I went out, I met the rest of the team, and I was doing things before because I'm very, very fortunate. I've got a ridiculous black book where I know everyone. So I've been very fortunate, like, through boxing. So from when I was fighting and then retiring from boxing, not accomplish what I believe that I wanted to set out and accomplish, but so it still leaves a hunger in you. So when... Um, the Royal Fight Club started up with a geezer called Alan Lacey. When he started up, he said, Spence, you gonna come down? So he came down to the gym, because he's known me from when I was boxing. And like, he said, you know what, Spence? I'm gonna give you shares in the gym, you know? And like, you run the gym. So I was running all the boxes. I had everyone down there. I had Lex Lewis down there, Roy Jones, any big name that came up from America or whatever, they're coming to the gym. And it just, it just grew from there. It just grew and grew and grew. So when it's like on a network, so I was very fortunate. This guy, Alan Lacey, was the founder of white-collar boxing in the UK. No. Right? So, 
everyone doing white collar boxing now know this old boy Alan Lacey was the founder, started the thing over here because he got the idea from Bruce Silverglade from out in Gleason's in New York. And he went out, he went out and he used to do some tournaments, fly kids out and they'd all do something, put on big shows. So we was in the heart of the city. So in the heart, we're at London Bridge. We're in the heart of the city. So the amount of traders and money that was around. So I'd say, yeah, there's some kids that need some help and da da da. Guys with the stuff, yeah, yeah, because they're training with you and they see you on the TV and they, they, they think you're the, you're the best mates. Yeah, what do you need? Man was just writing out checks, writing out. So I, I got that. So from there, it just built and built and built. And it's like, I'm just so grateful to like MTK Global for saying, all right, Spence, you be the head of the foundation. So like, I get, I get, a, I get a wage, I can look after my family, and I can do other bits and bobs. And that's, that's, the, that's the good thing. It's not, it's not about, like when you were saying like, you know, you, you, to get certain things, you don't have to be like how you was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Operative word, how you was. Excellent it's not who you are now. Yeah. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Howard Wilson was uh, prime minister of our country. It was 1976, the same year as the Olympics, when Sugar Ray Leonard won a gold medal, Michael Spinks won a gold medal, the Spinks brothers, Leon Spinks, they had a fantastic team. Um, 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 Davis, they had a, a really magnanimous team. That year, Howard Wilson, who was prime minister of our country, he said, he who rejects change is the architect of decay, called the only human institution that rejects progress is a cemetery, right? So we have to grow. This is a part of it. You, mm -hmm. right, Rob, Marvin, you got a TV show, bro, right? I'm saying, like, if you, if I can't you, really believe that. right, but I'm saying, what do you mean? Well, you have to, you have to. No, believe I believe it, that. Nah, it. It's, 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 it's tangible, right? But where did it come from? It came from your thought process. So everybody has a journey, right? And when we think we're going through something, we're going through it. Operative word, we're going through it to come out the other side. You know what I mean? Yep. So you had to go through what you went through. You know what I mean? Amazing story. Ra, I think you got shot more times than 50 Cent. No, I never. Five, I got shot. Right? Five? five times, yeah. Yeah, I don't even believe 50 Cent got shot that many times. But regardless of that, but you're still here. So you're living testimony like whatever you want to put it down to. The universe, God, Allah, Jesus, Buddha. I don't care what you want to call it. Whatever wasn't done with you. You know what I mean? That was part of the molding. Do you get what I'm trying to say? That was part of it. There's a, there's a word in the Latin called, what's it? It's uh, called docomy. And docomy comes from the, the Latin term of when you are, when you're putting, when you're making metal and like you have, you have a, 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 a stillman or a, a, a metal you're down there beating on the, they're beating on the still and then they got to purge it in that water. Wow. But if it doesn't reach the right temperature and you take that metal out of it at the wrong time, it will break. Wow. But could you imagine what that metal's going through when it's being pounded, it's being beaten, it's being able to make a sword? You've done that now. Now you're coming out, you're glistening as that sword. You get what I'm trying to say? And you're cutting through things. I don't come want to hear no talk. Yeah, yeah, no, on, I don't want to hear no put-down talk because you can't do no put-down talk around me. I'm not having no, that. No, but it's, it's not, it's, it ain't, this is just the first step in the right direction I like to look at it as. Do you know what I'm saying? Although... I've done some good things. There's bigger things and better things coming. Not for me, for youngsters and other one, people. One hundred percent. That's, that's all I focus on. So I won't get caught up in the emotions of it all right now because I don't think I've achieved what I need to, and that's all coming. And thanks to you and other people like-minded like ourselves. Do you know what I mean? Even Shaka, old Yanga TV, we wouldn't be here without him. MTK, uh, of course, of course. we wouldn't be here without of course, MTK. Of course. So I'm saying, like, I'm, I openly said it in my interview on with. Um, a journalist before, Daniel Kinnikan is the reason why I sit here today as successful as I am, because he helped change my mindset into being a criminal, into being a gentleman, a father, a dad, and a businessman, and not committing crime. I get rid of my ego, live a certain way, conduct myself a certain way, and since I've took on that model, I'm the man I see today, oh, right. and I'm proud of that. You know? uh, and when you're saying that, everyone gets that phone call from him. Yeah. You do, you get that phone call, and it's like, yeah, you know I mean, I ain't gonna point an Irish accent, I won't upset <laughs> But everybody gets that phone call and you gotta do better. You know what I mean? Mm. You're not you're not doing it well, you need to go really deep, deep, deep. And then you're like, right, so he's a he's a he's a he's a big reflectionist. I got a lot of time for that guy, I got a lot of love for him. Oh, you know I mean? those people world. don't wanna call his name, but no, I am not a lot of people, I'm me. Right? Same so I'm telling you how it is. So, you know what I mean? I see the hair's growing as well, Marv. Come on, What's going on, man? You know what it is, yeah? Like you, I, you trying to be in the Jackson 6 no, now? No. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's, more, it's more about 
helping the youngsters deal with mindsets, deal with their egos, deal with peer pressure, you know, like, I've made it, I've made it to where I am today, this is what I said to someone yesterday, yeah. I made it to where I am today, yeah, without a haircut, skin, in debt, after being evicted from my gaff. <laughs> yeah, and I ain't going to prison. No one's looking to kill me. I'm not getting hurt. My door's not coming off. I'm getting up in the morning, I'm getting out of my bed, yeah, I'm eating my breakfast, I'm getting out of my shower, I'm getting ready, I'm getting in my car, and I'm going to work. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. The debts are going to get paid. It's not a problem. I'm working, I'm grafting, I've got no worries. Do you understand? So all this ego stuff with everybody, got to look the part, got to be the part, got to fit in the part, and then end up in prison. So my motto was, nah, for what? All this every day running yeah. about like lunatics, risking their liberties for price they can't put their fingers on, stabbing, shooting, killing, going to prison from one day to life, for what? For what? Like, so now the narrative's slightly changing towards building infrastructure so we can help our youngsters develop into the best human beings they can be, is why I'm doing nothing but the truth. Because what I've realised over the last five years is that if I'd have spent the time that I'm spending now on all the kids I come into contact with many years ago, I would never have to go to prison. I would never have to get stabbed. I would never have to get shot because I would have created billionaires. But me personally, and I can openly say it, I groom kids to risk their liberty and they've gone to prison. Do you know what I'm saying? So I give people products, I give people work, I give people graft, I've done things with people, they ended up in prison. Like, I, I convince them to do something because it's in their best interest. Like, what the hell is that all about? So I'm trying to change that narrative now, and when I look at a human being, I think, do you know what? He's good at this, he's good at that. How I can help him is this. Plug him into this one, plug him into that one, give him this, help him with that, and then put him on his journey. And if every older had that same mindset and principle, none of our youngsters would be killing each other. None of them would go out of prison. And I'm another living testament to that because I think I've took maybe 15, 20 kids away from crime in the last four years that have turned over a decent amount of money. Now, I've done that single-handedly on my own. Now, with the strategic alliance that I'm about to make in the next six to 12 months, we're gonna affect thousands of kids all around the country. And it's not affecting them in any way, but positive, for positive change, for positive influence, reaction, and um, consequence, like everything they do, they're just gonna help them grow. Like I learned something about life, right? And I learned this within the last four years, right? In business, yeah, this is what I'm learning now. All I have to do is add value. Simple as that. Add value, yeah? That's it. So whatever you, yeah, just sitting down doing that, when you're thinking about saying getting stoned or having a drink, Think about what you can add value to. And then what you can do is you can put your head together and find out out of all the millions of organisations on the planet, which one of them organisations you can speak to where you can add value to. Because we can all add value to something. That's something I've just realised. And if Marvin Herbert, after 38 years of extreme criminality, can add value in the corporate world, social world and the prison world, any one of you can. And this is the message I'm trying to get out there now. So the reason why I've asked you to come on, Spence, is because from what I know of you, you've grafted your whole life, you've done the boxing, you've been legit. I've never known you to be a prison. I don't even know if you've been in trouble with the police, right? I know <clears throat> from where you're from, being of colour, you would have had to encounter from the 70s some sort of conflict with authorisation, that sort of authority of some sort, right? So. I don't personally know anything about your personal life, so can we venture back to... Good, that's the best way. I don't want yeah. no one to know. No, it's like... Um, no, you're Brixton, right? Everyone thinks that. No, 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 no. Half and half. You know what it was? It was mad. It was like my mother and father, we were in Kennington, on the Kennington Lane, and my aunt was Cali, which was... Cali estate. That but was back Brixton. in the day, it was all Brixton, though, wasn't it? Yeah, it seems that way. That no, it was, though. Back in the day, that was all yeah, Brixton. Yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was, it just could be But it wasn't because, like, Kennington was a predominantly white area on the tracks where I was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which has all changed now. And 
Then you go past Kenton Park, you're in the Oval, then from the Oval... Yeah, from the Oval it got yeah, from the oval, black. You get, yeah, <laughs> that's where so, on the weekdays, I was raised by my aunt from six months old. My mom and dad went back to work. My mom had me. She, like, took, took six months off, and then she went back to work. And my dad was always grafting. My dad was a... He, my dad worked for British Aerospace in Weybridge. So, it was like... I was raised with my aunt and her kids, who were like my older brothers and sisters, even though my cousins, but they were like, yeah, coming up it was like eight years, you know how it goes, come on. right? So they were, they were my brothers and sisters. And that was nuts for me because I got, I'm, but I'm grateful because I got two cultures. So all my mates, when I was in Kenton, they were all white, all of them. You know what I mean, there was like three black families around our state yeah. and everyone else was white. Then I'd leave from there and 10 minutes on a bus, on a, on a number three bus or a 172 bus, and I'm in, I'm, in, I'm in Brixton, and all my mates there, they were all black. It'd be, you'd be shocked to see a white person in that area where we grew up. Yeah, come on. Yeah, I mean, even Especially like, in the 70s, 80s. Right, yeah, right. So, like, <laughs> yeah, so, like, late 70s, early 80s, there was a different time. It was a different time. And, like, what I realised is this is, like, I learned early that people are actually just people. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And once you start realizing that, and like people are very tribal, you know, certain things ain't racism. Certain things actually, because we're tribal. As, as you, like I'll come in there now, and I see you got, you got a bit of hair on your head now, you know what I mean? And I'm thinking, oh, I got a bit of hair on your head. And like I see the cameraman over there, who's got a, a number one fade, as far as I'm concerned, he's a prick, right? <laughs> no, okay, right, you get what I'm trying to say? Because we are, this is how we go, because unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, this is what we do as human beings. We, 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 we base things on our differences when we should be basing things on our similarities. And our similarities are the fact that we are all human beings. Our similarities is that, you know what I mean, everyone's got a, you know what I mean, try not, try not go to the toilet for a whole week and you find out what's going to happen to you. Yeah. I dare you. You know what I mean? Try not to drink water for, for, for five days and you see what's going to happen to you. Why? Reason we, so let's base things on our similarities. The similarities that we're human beings, the similarities is that, that we all are based on frequencies. So if you do something regularly, it means that you frequently do it. Right, so if we're all based on frequencies, our energy levels, you can feel the vibrations. Like if someone's gonna, you're gonna feel someone for someone else, you're gonna feel someone. It's not anyone can say, ah, oh, Spence, you're gonna come down and do my show. I'm thinking, fun that. You know what I mean? I'm Spence Safira and I'm famous. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but Marvin phoned me like, all right, Spence, what are you doing? Uh, you wanna come on the show next week? I'm like, of course it's you. I'm gonna run rich and you're my guy in it. Right, this is how it goes. So everything, it works, we work at frequency levels and we need to work and base our things on our similarities and not on our differences. And once we do that, then we're gonna be cool because I don't understand it. Like I know, my parents came to, my dad came to, to England 1958. Right, he came to England. Now, when my dad's telling me when he came to when he came to England, he's saying like, "Right, son, when I was coming home from work, I had to have two Guinness bottles." And then back in the day, the Guinness bottles were really yeah, big. Yeah, yeah. I had to have liter bottles. Yeah, exactly. Right? They were liter bottles. Yeah. I had to have two Guinness bottles, empty Guinness bottles in my bag to fight Teddy Boys. And you're thinking, what? When you're thinking of racism back then, you're thinking skinheads and no skinheads nah, didn't even exist. Nah, nah, nah. Right, you know what I'm skinheads come late seventies, yeah, isn't it? Skinheads kind of the irony of this: skinheads came late seventies. The skinheads listened to ska, what came out of Jamaica. Yeah. They were, that was their thing, and then it, I don't know how it kind of got twisted to become racial, but that's how it was. So I don't, I don't buy this thing on 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 the racism thing. I speak out against racism so much that I get branded racist. I'm saying, are oh, you stupid? You know what I mean? You know how many white mates I got? White? No, sorry. You know how many white brothers I've got? Me saying white mates, that's a liberty. I've got white brothers. I've got people who, are, who ain't the same skin tone, but what we share is a common, common denominator. We find something that we have a common denominator in. I'm grateful that it's boxing. I can show you my phone. There's not a day that don't go by. I don't get messages from people. Oh, Spence, I like to make people's day. Do you know what I mean? That's my buzz. I'm yeah. going to be real. If I can make someone's day, that is like someone giving me a million pounds. That's what I've said to you about being selfless. Yeah, I love it. Yeah? I love it. I'm, that's, I'm, that's, I'm that's what, on it. I, 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 that's what I like, what I love about you, yeah? Thank you very because much. Because, you know, like I said, you see people doing things for charity, like, I, 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 I've been visiting places, and then people said, we get some pictures. I said, for what? They said, put on your social media. I said, you know what? These are things I don't really... I don't want to put on my social media. Like, this is for these lot to know what I'm doing for them. It ain't for the world to know. Do you know what I mean? I don't want people to know, like, 
I'm helping these people. Like these people are proud people, innit? I don't want them in photos with me or around it. And people are gonna put the thing two or two together and say, like, oh he's down there. So they might want not they might not want to let people know that they're at the food bank. Or something caught in a photo Rob. with me, like, come Rob. on, mate. I don't like, want a picture. I just want to give them their food. I want to give them their money. Every, I want to give every, them their bits. Every Christmas, every Christmas, every Christmas we do, we do the Christmas feed. So we go out and it's like, it would be like MTK Global. They give me thousands of pounds for me to go out, Christmas, feed the homeless. So any major celebration, it could be Christmas, it could be Easter, it could be, we, like, we go. But then also, in the weekdays, every week I do tea and coffee club down in Croydon, and I do one in London Bridge, where I'll just give teas and coffees out yeah. to the homeless. Now, I do this every week. I'm on social media quite regular, but I don't want to film that every week because people got pride. Yeah. Or it's like, when I'm saying that oh, we're doing this food, I never show people's faces. Yeah. Reason why, because you got, and there's certain people that are homeless that, you would you see them on the street, you wouldn't even believe that they're homeless. You wouldn't yeah. believe that they're going through something. And that's what I've learned at the food right. banks, yeah. When I was done the food banks, yeah, the people come up like, what and you got no food? They're like, Mom, I'm struggling. I was like, rah. Right, exactly. And I, these are people coming with their families. I, I was like, wow, I thought you were sweet. I thought you mate, I was shocked. And this is only the last four or five years that I've started noticing all this stuff since my transition, you know. So what you do is that I, I notice it and I, I I really do applaud you for the effort and the work you put in outside of what people do see. Um, moving on, so we like doing things in similar ways within society. We've both got a passion for boxing. Um, I won't go too deep into boxing, but... So what am I doing there? I'm going on. <laughs> right, so your three best boxers of all times, yeah. yeah? And why were they your three best boxers of all times? The first one's quite easy. In fact, our pal just sent him to me, sent me a clip of Muhammad Ali. What Ali stood for, there'd never be nobody like that guy. What he just stood for. Someone going, someone going up, you know what I mean, to, you know what I mean, to, I guess, the US government court system and beating Uncle Sam. That guy standing up to, on certain things saying, look, I ain't going to your war. You're trying to send me to, to war, to Vietnam? Nah, sod that. I ain't going. And got stripped of his world title. Now, I know you're, go, you're going to have world champions on it. You go ask him. Go ask someone like her, uh, Sonny Edwards. Would you be prepared to give up that gracious belt for something that you believed in? And as much as we like to sit down and think, yeah, I'll do that, I'll do... No, you wouldn't. I wouldn't do it. I'm going to be real, I wouldn't do it. You know what I mean? So what Ali, what Muhammad Ali stood for, he's at the top. He ain't my greatest fighter. He's not. You know what I mean, I've got other guys that I've got who, who, uh, who, I'm, who I'm far more intrinsically in love with than Muhammad Ali. Who's that, who's that? But what he, I, I would say like, if I was to play somebody um, ab above Ali, um, Ray Robinson, Sugar Ray Robinson, to me was the guy and he would have beat up Floyd Mayweather as far as I'm concerned. But these young kids don't know shit no more. Mm. Reason why, because these young kids don't know what happened last week. So when you say Ray Roberts says, ah, well, that was back in the day. and it was a... No, Ray Roberts was a badass man. There were better guys than Ray Robertson that never got shots at the title. So if I was to say my three, it would be like, Ali um, would be my number one. Then it would be, um, Ezra Charles, who was the former heavyweight champion, but he's the greatest light heavyweight, but he never won, he never won a, he never won a title. He never won a title at light heavy, but he went on to become heavyweight champion of the world. And then my third guy would be most probably Gene Tunney. And that would, guys, who's Gene Tunney? Gene Tunney famously, um, famously beat um, Jack Dempsey, but we're going back like 1923. Yeah. And Gene, Gene Tunney was, was a white dude, but he was a guy that would, would bounce around the ring and properly box. Like, yeah. kind of like what Sonny Edwards was demonstrating the other day when he won his world title. He, <laughs> now, I'm, you think I'm joking, I'm telling you. Yeah, no, Gene sick. Tunney was badass. And it's, 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 in, it's incredible how like, history forgets like these old guys. But Gene Tunney is one of my favorite fighters. One of my favorite fighters. So I'd say like, Ali, Ezra Charles, um, and, and Gene Tunney were like my top three favorite fighters who I can sit down and, and yeah, and I haven't really got like, because I've got loads, I just like watching the game. I just grew up watching boxing, but more than anything, everybody, you've just got to bow to Ali, 
The money that is inside sport is because of that one man. Mm. What he stood for, becoming a three-time uh, weight uh, world champion and at, and at the first and second time of him becoming world heavyweight champion, when he beat Sonny Liston in, in 1964, February 25th, he weren't, meant to be, he weren't meant to win that fight. He was a massive underdog and he beat him. And when he comes back and he wins back the title 10 years after, in, in, in October 74 in Zaire, in the Rumble in the Jungle against George Foreman, he's meant to get killed in that fight. Do you know, he's, he, George Foreman was meant to kill him. Not just beat him up, he's, they thought Ali could die. Mm. And Ali knocks him out in eight rounds. So, Ali to me, what he stood for, how charismatic he was, he's a good looking man, he was, he was you know what I mean? He, he had incredible, um, he was an incredible orator. He was a very learned man. He had a good and, boxing IQ. Yeah, he had, a, he had a massive eye. And he's also, when you see him, what he stood for when he was a young man, what he stood for, like he was, he was the civil rights movement, even though he wasn't civil rights, yeah, got but it. he was the civil rights movement. Um, he was around the prominent figures of a Malcolm X, of a, of a, uh, of a Martin Luther King. That, he was, it was that era, and Ali made being black so cool. You know what I mean? So cool. Reason why? Because Ali had little white kids in playgrounds saying they wanted to be my homie. Yeah. You know what I mean? That was I big back then, isn't it? Hundred grand well. He made, so, no, at that time there as well, of the, of the massive racial divide, nah, and then what he grew into, Next that's beautiful. Next yeah. level. I love the guy. So what, 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 what was your most memorable moment in the ring? My own? Your own. Or my yeah. own experience? Yeah. Uh, I would reckon, like, um, my first ever professional fight because it was on the undercard of Herbie Hyde versus Tony Tucker for the WBO heavyweight title when I fought one before. I was a floater. My first fight, it was under Frank Warren, and... I watched that fight. Yeah, and it was, and it was mad. I fought, like, Herbie, Herbie Hyde, it was like, you're a floater, and there's a guy, Ernie Fossey, who, he, um, who was the matchmaker. Yeah. And like, Ernie Fossey coming, he goes, hey, don't worry, Spence, he's useless, this kid. Everybody's useless. He's useless, you know what I mean, he's useless. If you can't beat him, you might as well retire. That's what he said to me, I'm like, right. I remember fighting this guy, Mark Sawyers, and the guy just punched me up. I won the fight, I had a big gash in my forehead. I won on points, but it was like, just to think, like, I'm running around saying like, yeah, I'm an unbeaten pro. I'm, I was running around shouting, and Charlie Magri, the uh, former WBC flyweight champion was my trainer at the time. Um, and that to me would be my best memory because I remember like it was in, it was in Norwich um, and I sold so many, what was that June 25th? It was, the same, it was the same night as Mike Tyson biting the air of Evander Holyfield, yeah. right, crazy. But it was just, yeah. To me, it was that because it was like, I oh, my first pro fight and it was just so much pressure on all the rest of it. So that, that to me. Was, yeah. So nice. the question why doesn't need to be answered. Yeah. So I was asked why, but it's the first pro fight. And yeah. That, yeah, sick, yeah. sick, 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 yeah. sick. Um, which was sort of, how can I put it? It's like, I'll give you an example, right? Daniel used to punch my head in, in the ring, yeah? And I couldn't get to him. Did he? For, yeah, yeah, for two years. He was just too elusive, too elusive. And then, he, he could never do that to me. I'm 47 years old. He could <laughs> never do that to me. I'll tell you that right. now. You heard me. I hold that. <laughs> right, and then one day, one day he was in the ring, and I was, uh, you know, we were just like, I just thought, you know what, today I'm, I've got a box, I've got a box, I've got a box, I've got to move, I've got to do everything right. And after he went, he went to me, uh, I'm a lot better today, didn't you? I was like, oh, is that one up? Yeah, he was like, yeah, wicked, wicked. I was like, yeah, that's what I got through. But that was like my best moment in, in anything I'd ever done, right? Do you ever have one of the moments like, you never won anything, but you just sort of overstepped a threshold, if that makes sense. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, I could what was say, your best moment I, at that I could, point? I, I, could, I could say more about life. Do you get what I'm trying to say to you? Yeah. Because I know for a fact, this is, I can tell you, and like, you go speak to many fighters, I know I was the undisputed world's um, gym fighter. I could beat up anyone in the gym. I don't care who you was. I could just, I could, I, mm, in the, in, the, in, the, in the gym, I was an undisputed gym fighter. And like now, it's like it's weird, because I can look back and say, no, I can take it, it's like, you know what I mean? It's not, it doesn't, doesn't bother me. 
because I, what I've learned is I've learned to champion life, and it's about championing life. Mm. It's so, like, do you, by, 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 by saying that, do you mean you couldn't take what you done in training into the ring? I couldn't. See, and do you know what? Yeah, I couldn't. I, I understand what you yeah. mean by that because I've, some boxers, yeah, I've, I've been sparring with them, yeah, and. I, I'm a pressure fighter, so I stick it on people. Uh, I know you are. And these people, yeah, like they. Oh, calm down now, Marv, calm they, down. They, they, they mobbed them. I couldn't even hit these people. And then I've watched them in the ring and I've watched them getting punched up. And, I'm and thinking, you're saying, what's going on? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So there, there are certain people, there are certain people, I'm going to be wrong. Like, in boxing, you have to have some form of disadvantage. And it may not be a financial thing, it may not be a physical thing, but you've got to have some form of disadvantage to make you really be hungry. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, I got, it, I got it, I got it. And if that hunger's not there, I'm just being 100, you know? if, that, if that hunger's not there, I'm going to be real. When I was a kid, I've always been a face boy. I'm just being 100. So, <laughs> I, I was that guy, Marv, so, like, you couldn't go in any area and I would have one girl over there, a girl over there, one over there, one over there. Not proud of it now. I'm a happily married man. I've got four beautiful kids, right? But I was that guy. So, uh, so I knew, and because I box, like the elders who were doing their thing, they would always like, oh Spencer, boy, Spencer, yeah, I'm take I'm my hungry. car. Yeah, yeah. So I always had big whips. I've always had. Do you get what I'm trying to say yeah, to you? Yeah. So where was my desire to do anything? It wasn't there. Go look at other guys. You go look throughout your history. The guys you you got and made it. There was always sunk. Man, maybe they came from an impoverished background. I didn't come from an impoverished background. They came from something that gave them that burn. You mm. know what I mean? And that's why you got to respect somebody like a Floyd Mayweather, right? Who didn't come from Nunk, right? Had it hard, but when he made his, when he knew like Ra got 10 more in the bank, easy yeah. to keep on driving, keep on going on, and keep on going on, and keep on going on, and keep on having that, that discipline. You know what I mean? Because what did it say? Uh, um, I think it was Socrates that said an undisciplined life is not worth living. And it's the truth. So when I look at, like, for me, when I was, when I was, most things I, I had, you know what I mean? I had things around me which kind of took away my desire. But when I think about it now, because there was so much weight of expectation on me, just in life in general, like certain things that you didn't accomplish, you think, oh man, so when you, when, you, when you stop fighting and you go into management, or when you stop, when you stop fighting and, like, and I was promoting for a bit, I was training fighters, when you start doing that, you can then become vicarious. So what does vicarious mean? Vicar that you can live through other people. So it's like right now, this is how I am. I, I'm a very, very vicarious. I know you, Marv. I've come in here, see the show. This is my show. Yeah. Right? Because I, I know how this thing goes. Like, when you are happy, for other people's successes, yours is just right in the corner. Do you get what I'm trying to yeah, say? Yeah, I've got I remember like when, when, right, when Sonny, when Sonny, when Sonny Edwards was fighting the other day for, for, for his world title, I could just hear by his demeanor in tonality of how he speaks. Yeah? That's it, right? This is a road you, you know? Mm. Might be a little white boy, but it's a road you. He's from road. I don't can't, you can't trick me and say you're not from. I can tell you that you're from road. Because of that, like I said, base your things on your similarities, on your differences. So I'm basing it on similarities. Ra, I, can, I hear his link. I, you know what? I want this guy to brock up this little South African man. So you're willing it on. So when they win the title, it's like that's part of your victory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you're, you, know, you get what I'm trying to say yeah, to you? Yeah, yeah. When you're out and you're seeing someone like, you're hearing like, boy, oh, such and such just, just won the Brits. Yeah, Ra, that's my guy. Yeah. I don't even know you, but I know you. So that's how it goes. So once you start... You start, you can live through other people, not to the fact that, all right, you live through them in a way that you just want the best for them. And once you want the best for them, how it goes is this is like, you know what I mean? Uh, when you start expressing that gratitude, the more things, the more gratitude that you express is the more abundance that you experience. So be grateful. So I show gratefulness. I'm grateful to be on your show. You get what I'm trying to say to you? I'm grateful right. to have you. Right, it's exactly. <laughs> so therefore, you know what? So it's reciprocated. What's going to happen is the universe, God, Allah, whatever you want to call it, is going to draw that to you because we are all carbon-based as human beings. So, you know what I mean? Anything that you speak, so when you, you've got to speak it till you seek it till you see what you say. So when you start speaking it, it will come into existence, but it goes to a rule. First, you've got to think it, then you've got to speak it, then you've got to work at it, and then it comes into fruition. Yeah. Right? It goes in that, think it, 
speak it, work it, it's yours. Right? So there's nothing that can't be out there. Because right, when, I, when we were first coming, he said, yeah, man, I always think, yeah, when I get my own show on telly, and right, right. now you've got it. Now we got it. Younger, you've got it. Why? Because it came first from your thinking. So once it came from your thinking, then it became your thought through speech. We speak it into reality, yeah. You speak it into reality because yeah. why? Because whether we believe as, as people of faith, we believe that God said, let it be, and it was. And it is. And it is. And it is. Right. And now Definitely you got it. Is. And we got it. It ain't, it's what it ain't just me. I'm just the conduit for everyone now. So if I can get here, the door's open, isn't it? So everybody just needs to be that product that everybody wants and everybody wants to see. And that's it. You're sitting here or sitting on the next spot or sitting in another spot. But as long as you've got something that everybody needs or everybody wants or everybody desires, as long as it's a viable, legitimate product, we're investing, and it's as simple as that. So, moving forward, I'm heading to Buckingham Palace, getting knighted and getting me MBE, OBE and all that. Um, yep. Yeah, but you have to, because you've got to visualise to materialise. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Everything comes from, I want people to realise this here, everything comes from the, the art of visualisation. Everything. And do you know what? I'll, I'll say that because everything that's ever happened to me, everything I've ever gone through, I've wished it all. And as mad as it sounds, yeah, every bird, every bit of ag, every stabbing, every robbery, every, even a shooting, I, I, I thought I got... In my dream, I got shot six times because in my dream, I see six holes. And when I got shot, I got shot five times. But I'd seen this dream and I'd wished getting shot and I wanted to feel it. And then after about two years of me getting shot, we're going through physio. Oh, no, sorry, so let me say this. You wanted to feel being shot? Yeah, 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 when I was you a see kid. This, you see this? See this? Right, so then, and then the sixth hole, I got shot the fifth, the, went, went through my arm here, bounced off the floor, went through my hip, and come out my spine, which was the sixth hole. So everything I dreamed about, wished about, actually happened 30 years later. Even that scar, I watched Enter the Dragon. And I'll see Honestly. the game. And I wanted yeah, yeah, that yeah, scar. Yeah. And I wished for this scar. I wished to be a cat eight. I wished to be an armed robber. I wished to get shot. I wished for it all when I was a kid because I wanted to be that guy on the telly. And that's what he's saying. Speak into existence. I'll be careful what you wish for because it will come I'm true. Not when you, you want it and not when not how you want it. But again, like I could sit here for the rest of the night, chatting, chatting, chatting. And time is endless. But unfortunately, our time here has to end. And it's one of them things, no, I'm, I'm being very, very I'll, I'll need to have you back on another stage to yeah, do a, a, a part two, and we'll cover other subjects. But if you want any messages out there for the youngsters now, yeah. any light, because I know you're, you're a man of influence, you're a man of would, many talents would, and a lot of knowledge. I would say Like the encyclopedia of the urban yeah. platform. <laughs> I would say, you know, the maddest thing is like, um, I did Pound Sterling's podcast the other day. You know what I mean? And he was he's saying to me, like, these guys them saying, yeah, Spencer Farrell, man, yeah, he's the man's them boxing pundit. And I was like, right, I was kind of taken aback getting accolades from my own community and that. But on well, the rules, this is what I'll say to you, is like, there's a man called Marcus Garvin, he said this, he said, God and nature first made us who we are, then out of our own creative genius, we make ourselves who we want to be, follow that great law, put God and the sky as our limit, and eternity our measurement. Eternity means forever. So, you have to realise, we are like pebbles. And when you take a pebble and you flick it into a pond, it ricochets out. That's your attorney. Your attorney's perpetuity means it lasts forever. Do good, be good, and be blessed. That's what I've got to say. Bench, thanks a lot for coming on again. It's been a great pleasure having you on board. Yeah, man, it's been a pleasure, man. Thank no you No doubt much. we'll be doing a part two very soon. For what? <laughs> <laughs> I love that, I love that. So stay tuned and tune in again. Um, another fantastic episode from the world-famous Spencer Fearman. Have you got any um, social media platforms people can follow you on? It's easy. Master underscore knowledge on Instagram, Spencer underscore knowledge on Twitter, Spencer Fearman on Facebook. And anyone who hits me up, you want to talk boxing, I'm your guy. That's all. I like talking boxing so much, it's, it's, it's unreal, because I've learned to make my passion my paycheck. There you go. So that's Marvin Herbert, nothing but the truth. Herbert.Marvin on Instagram. Marvin Herbert, nothing but the truth. Stay safe, stay focused, stay positive. See you next time.